Hi students. Um, what I'd like to do is model reading through this poem and then I want to show you my thinking process as I stop to analyze it. So just real quickly, here we go. Ink runs from the corners of my mouth. There is no happiness like mine. I have been eating poetry. The librarian does not believe what she sees. Her eyes are sad and she walks with her hands in her dress. The poems are gone. The light is dim. The dogs are on the basement stairs and coming up. Their eyeballs roll. Their blonde legs burn like brush. The poor librarian begins to stamp her feet and weep. She does not understand. When I get on my knees and lick her hand, she screams. I am a new man. I snarl at her and bark. I romp with joy in the bookish dark. Okay, if that were my very first time reading this poem, I would be like, I'd have no idea what this poem was about. Okay, so I think I mentioned the other day in class that <laughs> poetry is work. You have to read through it and then read through it and read through it and really think about the message of the poem because the message of poems is not obvious. So here's how I go through a poem. So I'm thinking about eating poetry, eating it, eating it, eating, devouring. Um, we normally read poetry. So the word eating, if I think about the word eating, eating is a necessity. Um, we eat several times a day and we do it because eating helps us stay alive. And so I'm wondering if that has something to do like this. Poetry is life sustaining. Okay. I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. So I'm noticing this first line here. Ink runs from the corners of my mouth. And when I read that line, I'm kind of thinking of a vampire. You know how in vampire movies, you've got the vampire who attacks and then the blood is running from the corners of their mouth. I, I think I'm thinking that. So we have a someone who's eating poetry and the ink off of the actual page of the book is running down their mouth. Um, normally, if we eat food and it's running down our mouth, it's because we're not eating daintily or like in a fancy restaurant. We're devouring something. Okay. There is no happiness like mine. So this eating vigorously is happiness. I have been eating poetry. Sounds to me like more than one poem, okay? Not I have been eating a poem, but I have been eating poetry, plural. The librarian. Okay, now I don't have a librarian at home. I don't have a librarian at my office. So clearly this person, the narrator is in a library. The librarian does not believe what she sees. Okay, I don't know what to think about that yet. Her eyes are sad and she walks with her hands in her dress. Okay, so the library is not happy because in the poem, literally, someone is eating the poem. So the librarian, I mean, you, you think, you know, librarians want people to read. So obviously what's going on is more than just someone reading a poem. I mean, they're eating it. They're devouring it. The poems are gone. The light is dim. Well, you know, in libraries, it's not that bright. Um, and the poems, remember how I thought that might be plural? There's evidence for that poems. Um, this person has, the poems have disappeared because this person has been eating them. And this is where we go into the dog 
imagery, okay? I mean, we don't think of libraries and dogs as going together. The dogs are on the basement stairs and they're coming up. Okay, dogs, they're coming up. The only thing I'm thinking about right here is that dogs, they eat our leftover food. I mean, I feed my dog his dog food, but I also feed him sometimes the leftovers. So here come the dogs. Their eyeballs roll. Okay, I don't know why they have blonde legs. Blonde legs. They're white colored dogs. Is that purposeful? I, I guess so. I mean, otherwise the author wouldn't have said color. Their blonde legs burn like brush. Okay. I know brush, right? That's dead yard clippings. Um, it's dead stuff outside. And when you set dead stuff on fire, it just, I mean, it just explodes. So their legs are like exploding. I don't know if that means they're running to get to the library as they're coming up the steps. So that's just kind of what I'm thinking. And now we have the poor librarian. Uh, it doesn't mean she's poor, as in she doesn't have any money. It's like, oh, poor thing. The poor librarian begins to stamp her feet and weep. So normally somebody stamps their feet when they're angry. So she could be angry here, and she's crying. And I'm remembering that she's, like, like it doesn't say cry. Cry is like, <laughs> This is weep. A weep is like deep from in your chest. Like it's a, uh, uh, it's it's a, a weeping. She does not understand. Okay, so I'm taking a moment to think. We have the narrator who is in the library devouring the poems. I mean, I'm gonna say he. We don't know if it's a he or a she, but. He is consuming these as if his life depends on it um, because eating is a necessity. He's eating these poems. The librarian is watching him and doesn't understand. Now, normally, at least when I was growing up, if you went to a library, the librarian was always like, you know, the one getting you in trouble. You know, shh, quiet. Um, and I'm one of those people that when I read anything, well, especially if it's good, right? And I'll be reading it and I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh, look at this. this is, I'm expressive. I make noises. Or if I'm reading something and it gets sad, I'll be like, So if I were in a library, the librarian would be glaring at me, looking at me like, shh, be quiet, because I'm supposed to respect everyone else. So just, just thinking about that, it makes me think that the librarian is not pleased with the narrator's behavior as he's consuming these poems. And, you know, when we're reading poetry, is, is this literally happening? I mean, do we literally have somebody, I don't know, I'm going to take a piece of paper. Do we literally have somebody ripping the paper up and sticking it in their mouth to chew on the paper? Or is it a metaphor that this person is reading and just really taking in all the words? So you could read it as being literally, this is literally happening, and maybe that's more fun. Um, I see it as being more of a metaphor for how this person is feeling as they consume the poems. Okay, so the librarian does not understand. 
And you know, maybe the librarian has never had the experience of really, really enjoying something so deeply. I mean, that's possible. She does not understand. When I get on my knees and lick her hand, she screams. All right, well, we had the dogs. The dogs are running up. And, you know, it's, it's, I think, I mean, he's on his knees. So isn't he becoming kind of like a dog? He's a dog and he licks her hand. You know, dogs lick hands, especially if the dog wants us to give them more attention or more food. So I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. I am a new man. Okay, now that kind of makes me laugh because I think the poem was just saying that he kind of becomes like a dog. And then it says, I'm a new man. And so I think there's kind of a little contrast there. But if he is a new man, we know that something that he has read in these poems has changed him. And that word new is a very positive word. It's positive. You know, I have a new car. So it's a good thing. What's happened to him has been really good. But then you have the next line. I snarl at her. It's a snarl like growl. I snarl at her and bark. Okay, so it makes me think. Dogs bark. Okay, he's like a dog. He's barking. And dogs bark when they meet someone that's a stranger or they see someone who's dangerous, right? They're, they're a threat. Or if anybody's just entering into their territory. So he's snarling and barking at the librarian. I mean, I think that's figurative and not literal. Um, okay, so now we have another contrast. He snarls and barks. And then it says, I romp with joy in the bookish dark. And I'm thinking about that. Romping, romping. That word romp, it's kind of like the children are outside romping around. It, it means they're jumping for joy, jumping, moving. Okay, so these romping for joy. And then we have in the bookish dark. And I'm thinking about what those words mean. I mean, dark. It's Is it literally dark in the library now? Um, is it dark because the poems are gone? He has already consumed in them? bookish dark it maybe it was a book of poems and they're all gone because he's already consumed them hmm okay so that is the second time that I've read the poem with you right now and what I would do like my these are the questions that I wanted you to answer and then I wanted you to highlight some of the words that really stood out to you. And I know that we practiced that already. Um, I'm not done though, right? Now what I wanna do, I want to think about um, that chart and I want to be able to answer like, here's my paper. Like the S for subject. What is the subject of this? Uh, the subject. Okay, my answer would be the subject of, the, of this poem is someone, it's about someone enjoying poetry. How poetry makes someone feel like a new person. Okay, so what I want to do, I want to fill out those questions on the next slide. And I want you to do the best that you can on that. I'm going to send this to you now. And thank you for watching.